you'll notice now that if we if we freeze this there we move it over two full nudges and then a half nudge it's it lines up perfect okay and so what we're doing is we're basically putting in a unintended <coughs> design here we meant to do that right so we have this nice little design to break up the normal pattern to fix this issue it's a beautiful thing Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we are going to continue our stadium build. Uh, so I had to come back to the base and resupply on a few items. Also, just FYI, the reason... Well, there's a couple reasons why uh, I'm a couple days later getting this episode out to you. Um, first being that my father, who has been a widower for about three years or so my mother passed away uh, from covid back in 2020 uh got remarried so yeah he met met a new lady she's wonderful and uh, so we had the, the wedding over the weekend so i was involved with that and it was uh, a happy occasion so he's off on his honeymoon right now with his new bride um 81 years old too <laughs> <laughs> which is awesome uh anyway so so i had that going on uh plus i've, I've spent some time uh, some more off camera time working some more and uh, working out some kinks i should say with this build um a lot of weird stuff was going on and i had to kind of in some ways go back to the drawing board on this build to figure out a way to minimize um a lot of the issues i was having because things weren't lining up and all that and I think I have come up with a good solution uh, to get that to work. So let's grab a batch of concrete out of there. And uh, the very short version of what that solution is, is that it's making sure that we are building out the flooring lined up on our pillars. That is, that is the very, very short version. If we do that, and if we follow a consistent pattern for how we build out the floor, then when we get to the front and we start, you know, start starting to deal with these weird angles, we have things that we can use as guides to make sure everything is exactly where it needs to be with very minimal weirdness going on. Now, there's still gonna be a little bit of weirdness, but nowhere near the amount of weirdness that I had before. And so, in case some of you may be uh, building this along with me, we have a missing window here. Wait a second, what? Yeah. Okay, we'll have to keep an eye out for that. That might be in one of my blueprints, but I'm not sure which one it would be. It's also possible that I accidentally um, deleted it when I was kind of uh, preparing this for today's episode. So, yeah, in in the last episode, I had built out the second floor. This is the this is the uh, logistics floor that we're currently standing on. Um, and then I, you know, after figuring stuff out, I, I just tore it all back down, and I want to rebuild it on on camera with you guys, so you know exactly how to put this together. Uh, again, for the sake of anybody who may be building this along with me. But I think I have it figured out. And it's a a good feeling because, man, I was getting frustrated. I'll, I'll tell you what. I really was with the way things weren't turning out the way they should be. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start by temporarily putting you there. And then we're going to go in and get our 4x4 our four by four by one blueprint and we're gonna bring it over here to there let's freeze that and just make sure everything is lined up the way that it needs to be and that is correct okay we'll pop that in place and then we're gonna be uh, go into blueprint mode which we already are and we're gonna start putting these in place and you'll notice that it also lines up exactly where it needs to go there as well. 
And then we're going to bring these out. Three. All right, let me just double check this one last time. So we should have a total of 13 tiles here. We do. Okay, we're good. We are good. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to this corner. And once again, we're going to put that uh, block there temporarily. Grab our four by. And move it to there. Double check that everything's correct, and it is. All right, we'll lock that in place. And then we go out just one that way and one that way. Uh, no, sorry, two this way and one more here. And we don't need that any longer. And then this piece we just manually fill in here. Uh, and likewise, we manually fill in these. Uh, let's just take it to there for the moment. Now, I actually created a 3x3 three three piece as well. Let's go into our blueprints and to our foundations. And we want the 4x... Uh, no, I misnamed that. That should actually be a 3x3, three three, not a 4x3. Uh, okay, here. Let's fix that. Again, if you're looking for my blueprints for this, I still haven't put them on the Google Drive yet because we're not done and I'm still tweaking things case in point, right? But I will do that. When, the, when we're done with the architectural part of this build, I'll put that on the Google Drive. So let's go to Foundations. I want to lo load the 4x3x1. I think I was originally going to make it a 4x3, but then I decided just to make it a 3x3. Three three. And we just need to rename this 3x3. Three three. Make sure it's in the Foundations directory. And then we'll go into Foundations, Edit. And we want to delete the 4x3. Apply changes, and we're golden. Let's grab the 3x3, three three and we'll put that on the number 9 toolbar slot, because we'll be using it again. Now, uh, because it's a 3x3, three three, we need to... Uh, and, well, b because of the way that I set it up in the Blueprint Designer more specifically, we have to lock it and then nudge it to get the first one in place. And that's okay that that corner merged into here, because that's actually exactly what we want to have happen. Okay, we'll nudge this to the back there. Okay, that's good. And once again, we have one corner nudging in here, which is perfect. We'll talk about that when I uh, when we go up there and fill those the rest of those pieces in. Now, we're going to basically do the same thing over here. Uh, we'll put a piece in there uh, to start. We'll get the 4 by. Make sure we're not in blueprint mode for the first part. And slide it over here. Uh, I think that's too hot. Well, no, that's probably right. Let's just freeze it and check it. Yep, that's good. All right, we don't need that piece. This piece we can manually do. Go back to blueprint mode and then put all of these four buys in. Up to that point. And then up to this point. This will manually fill in. Put a three by here. And 
and a three by here. Now what we're going to do is uh, coming off of this pillar here. Oh, you know what? I actually was incorrect about something. We don't want these pieces protruding into here. And the reality of it is it really wouldn't hurt anything back here. What's important is things are lined up up there. But for the sake of keeping this consistent, um, I don't want those there. Okay, now, what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, this is our pillar, right? This is our four meter pillar. So we're going to take and put a one meter piece in here, and then we're going to zoop that all the way up to the front. Like so. This is where it's really going to count later. Okay. And then what we do is we just take and patch in these pieces here based off of this this side. So they're, they're coming in at an angle. And this is, so it's this tile here where the merging's taking place between the two floors. And it's kind of hard to see, but there's like a little sawtooth pattern, you know, going on uh, for these going into here. And this one actually, yeah, no, that one's there. Um, it's this one right here. Yeah, okay. We just want to make sure we have our little sawtooth pattern and so forth. Very good. I think we're okay on that end. Let's do our trick here where we put in a piece here. We bring that all the way in and then out one. And then this one we freeze in. We bring it all the way in until it's right there. Okay, I showed you that in the last episode, how that works. Let's get our sawtooth pattern in place first before we run our straights. There, now you can see the sawtooth pattern a lot better. Where's that shadow coming from? That's weird. Okay, so this is our pillar here. We we'll line up on there and we go straight out from here. Like so. Okay, all the way in, one out, and back until it goes right there. We have just that little bit of gap there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we want to build out the floor of this build because it'll really help us line things up correctly as we proceed here so let's get started now with floor number two okay um now, the difference between floors two and three from one <coughs> is that the underneath side of one has this inverted ramp here to give it, you know, kind of a nice little smooth transition. But using that on the upper floors causes problems, causes more than one problem, having to do with lining things up and getting you know, getting the blocks to line up properly on the ramps, which the game doesn't like to do. And so I decided for, to make things easier, um, 
that well and also now that I think about it also for aesthetic reasons too because there there isn't a corner piece for those inverted ramps you know underneath down there to go around the corner and so that that's another problem you know that it creates so I decided not to use those on the second and third floor and because of that I had to create new blueprints that didn't use those and so now we have a set of blueprints for floors two and three separate from floor one and if we look at the blueprints you can see where it says F2 that means floor two and in most if not all cases we can use floor two pieces on floor three as well in the case of the corners I just named it that way but even th even though this one says F2 we can also use that on floor three okay now as far as my toolbar goes um, what what is this yeah that's F2 F3 so it looks like I already set those up from an earlier practice run and it's still there so we're good to go there now what we need to do here is we need to you know knowing that we are perfectly lined up you know back with the columns back there uh, what we need to do is we need to lay down another row here because you know, I, I had mentioned that this is a reverse stadium. So instead of as the stadium goes up, going back like it normally would, it's actually going to overhang as it goes up. And it's going to overhang by two foundations each for each floor. We have So we have to go out. Uh, we have to build out one, and then the other foundation will be built into the blueprint. And we're going to start here and build this piece out to here. Like so. And then we'll bring this one over. Now, we're going to get the left inside corner piece. Uh, we don't want to be in blueprint mode. default mode. There we go. And we want to line that up onto here. We're going to need to bring it over this way a little more. And then we want this to... Okay, so if we bring it to here, we still have a little bit of a gap here. So, so now what we need to do is we need to do a, a half nudge to get it like that. So it's so it's now butted up against here. Okay. Now there's a way that I figured out how to measure and make sure that I set this up correctly. And here's how we're going to do that. We're going to come down here and we're going to drop these windows down to here. And if this is if this seam here is pretty much right in the center of this gap then we have it set correctly okay it's not perfectly in the center but that's that's as close as we'll, we can get it to be in the center and so as long as that is the case then we know we have placed this corner in the right location okay so let's do the same thing again over for the right corner now so this is the front right inside corner for floors two and three and once again we just want to do a half a nudge because because it's lined up it's butted up against here right um, and we also need it to butt it up against here so we do a half nudge to the right and lock it in place and then once again we'll perform our our little test here uh, to make sure that those are set correctly so we bring that down to there we bring that down to there and we make sure that the seam is right in the middle or close enough as possible into the middle of this gap and we know we're good and we can follow that same pattern um, on the third floor too took me some trial and error to figure that out by the way <laughs> so I didn't just come up with that immediately I had to yeah trial and error for sure 
looking good so far. All right, now, what we have to do here, we're going to have to do a little bit of trickery next for this next part, and here's why. If we... You'll notice that we have... Um, we have okay, so that's six foundations, right? But we still have a, we have a bit of a gap there, and we have a bit of a gap here. So it's not going to come together perfect. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab the three... Uh, wide inline piece and we're gonna line that up with a half a nudge there so it's lined up exactly exactly perfectly right and then we're gonna do the same thing over here we'll do a half a nudge there You'll notice now that if we if we freeze this there, we move it over two full nudges and then a half nudge, it's, it lines up perfect. Okay? And so what we're doing is we're basically putting in a unintended <coughs> design here. We meant to do that, right? So we have this nice little design to break up the normal pattern to fix this issue. It's a beautiful thing. How about that, huh? Okay, so let's come up here. And we want you to go there. And we're going to... Uh, we're going to go ahead and fill in that piece. We're not going to fill in this gap right now. Uh, because we're going to we're going to end up having to take it back out anyways when we start working on the third floor. So we're just going to leave that gap there. This one we can fill in though. Very good. Okay, so that takes care of the centerpiece with our intended design in the middle to break up the lines a little bit, add some variety. Right? Right? Am I right? Okay. Now, over here, we have um we have 1 2 3 4 5 7. Okay, so we have 7 and then a little extra there as you can see okay so we're gonna do something similar over here um, we're going to use I'm trying to think um, I think if we use two four pieces this will work if it doesn't then we'll use the threes so let's go with the fours first and see what happens here Let's bring that all the way here. And then if we bring that over to here and half nudge it over, that should be good. And what that does is it once again creates an intentional <laughs> pattern in the middle. And it makes it look like we meant to do it that way. Yes, indeed. And, you know, actually, now that I think about it, it's... It isn't... I don't think it's that gap that we're going to have to change later. It's this one here. Yeah. Okay, so we'll leave that gap there. Let's do the same thing on this side now. Again, I want to start out on the corner here just because we know this is perfectly aligned with everything else. We'll grab the four piece. <coughs> Gesundheit. And um, bring this in like so. that in a half nudge and we should have a nice even pattern over here that looks pretty damn good to me yes indeed it does and then we'll remove this piece here 
fact of the matter is we're going to actually be tearing up all of these when we do floor three. Um, but we'll, we'll worry about that when we get there. Looking good so far. Next part of this endeavor is that we're going to put our corner piece in next. And the way we're going to do that is I devised a little method to, for this too that works out pretty good. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to build this out oh, about four that way. And then maybe go, I don't know, seven or so out that way. This is all temporary scaffolding here, so it doesn't really matter that we get these numbers exactly correct. Um, and then let's start with here and then go there. Okay, so we have this corner piece down here. And, you know, remember, too, that the this is the side of the stadium, right? So we're not doing the overhang stair step effect on the side. The sides are just going to be straight up and down vertical lined up with each other like a real stadium would be on the sides. Okay? Um, so that and, and because we're doing it that way, that's going to actually make things a little easier on us. So we're going to bring up the corner and we're going to go into blueprint mode. And we want this to snap right on top of there, which it just did. Okay. Then what we're going to do, and we're going to stay in blueprint mode. And we're going to line the wire frames of the blueprints up with one another and freeze that in place. So as these two wire frames are perfectly aligned with one another. And then all we have to do now is just do two nudges to the right. One, two. Lock it in place. And then this is perfectly aligned exactly where it needs to be. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, then we just take this corner piece back out and we dismantle our scaffolding. There we go. Next, we're going to put our side pieces in. So we're going to leave this foundation here, but we're going to cut these ones out because they will be included in the, the blueprint side piece. We're going to grab number five, which is the side piece left F2. Make sure we're not in blueprint mode. And we're going to lock that there and then just slide it over just like that. Nothing could be easier. And it lines up perfectly with our corner here. Let's grab the three piece. Set that and set it here. Bring that over to there. Looking good. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to build out another temporary scaffolding. We're going to get our corner piece, put it back into blueprint mode, and snap it right on top of here. Uh, there. That makes that easy, easy peasy to line up. Okay. Now let's take our pillar, our four meter pillar, go into vertical mode. And we want, we want to bring this up seven, which is the height of the next floor. Then we're just going to build this out. I could have made a blueprint piece for this too, but it's, it's not that difficult to do. It's pretty fast. So I'll just do it manually. And then we bring these up seven and these windows up seven. And that takes care of the back corner. Let's go do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing over here. Uh, we'll build out a scaffolding about four and seven-ish. Let's pull, uh, pull that piece up, grab our corner piece and snap it on top of there. Stay in blueprint mode and then line up the next one on the wireframes. Those are lined up and then we just go back to the left this time, two nudges, one, two. And that should be lined up again perfectly. Looks good to me. Looks like it should. 
like we did before. We're going to cut away these tiles. We're going to grab the right side piece, the F2 side piece, and make sure we're not in blueprint mode. And we want to line this up here, bring it back there until it's perfectly lined up. And then we do two, three inline pieces here. That is all looking good. Build out our scaffold here to do our other corner piece. Right there. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. We will take our four meter pillar, go into vertical mode. Okay, and go up seven. And then build these pieces out again. Go back to zoop mode. Go up seven here. And seven here. Let's find our other pillars. right uh, here okay and then go back once again to oh, first we have to select it then we want to go to vertical mode um, I'm actually yeah see we got to make sure I don't screw this up because it's trying to line up on the overlapped foundation So if we just do this and bring that up to there, then we can line up on this and go up seven. Double check that that's correct. Yes, it is. All right, we'll do the same thing over here now. And then up seven. Check that, make sure that's correct. All right, guys, we are pretty much back now to where we started from in terms of laying down more floors. So I'm gonna cut the camera here and I'm gonna build out the logistics floor and then floor three in exactly the same manner as we built out floor two here, following the same exact pattern without any deviation whatsoever. <laughs> so that way we have good uh, lines to, to line up on when we start building floor three. So I will bring you back when we're ready to build out floor three. And we're back. Okay, so for the next part of this build, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to remove this, pretty much this entire row of foundations that were attached to the blueprints because they're not, they're no longer lined up as you can see properly with everything back here. And we need everything to be lined up with the foundations back here so that we can use our same techniques that we use with floor two to make sure stuff is lined up properly. Okay, so the short version is all of this needs to be cut away. Uh, up to that point. And this is, this is where we left that gap because these foundations are correct. They're lined up with this over here, but this other stuff is not. Um, so let's remove all of that and then we'll do the same thing over here. Up to the gap. Okay, so now we're lined up and we're going to reset these foundations based upon this alignment. And this is our pillar row here. So we'll bring that out to there. All right, so let's zoop this into here. And likewise, we'll do the same thing on this side.
I think we're ready to start. Now, uh, you know, lining up with the back here. I know I keep harping on that, but it's so important to uh, to do this right, to make this turn out right. That is, of course, for people who may be doing this along with me. If you're just watching to enjoy the build, then don't worry about it. But if you are doing this with me, then you really need to follow this stuff or you will run into all kinds of problems. Trust me. Um, okay, let's just bring that into there. We want to continue this from here. Get onto this side. To fill in that that little piece there. Bring that into there. And then use this one to fill in there. Okay, so all of these tiles now are our foundations are lined up with the back. Just kind of double checking here. Getting a little bit of a bird's eye view to make sure that is indeed the case. And it looks like it is. Okay, good. Now, if we did the rest of our work right, the rest of this should be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So what we're going to do is grab the left inside corner. And we're going to, again, bring it over here to where it's the bumps up against that. And even though we're fairly sure we did this right, we're still going to double check it anyways using our little guide mech, uh, guide technique here. Okay, I'm 95% sure that this is correct. But let's run the other one down. And we want to make sure that's more or less in the center of this gap. As much in the center as it can be. And I'm confident that we did that correctly. Okay, let's run over here and do the same thing on this one now. This time we want the right hand inside corner. And it looks like I I placed it correctly just right from the get-go. Look at me, my bad self. Okay, let's double check it. That looks right to me. Okay, good deal. Okay, now, um, this centerpiece is now even narrower than it was before because each time we come up with it, it gets narrower and narrower. So now what we have is one, two, three, four. We have a four full tiles and then partial tiles after that. So I think what we want to do here is I think I made a two piece for this actually now that I think about it. Um let me see. Front in line two piece for floor three, yeah. I I made a special one just for this. Okay, so we're gonna pop that one in. And pop that one in. And then what we'll do is we'll manually set this. So we'll freeze that there and just move it over one notch. And it's pretty much perfectly aligned. Or centered, maybe is the right word for that. Aligned, centered. Uh, yeah. I think that's right. Yeah. Okay. And then we can go ahead and, and actually do the top one because that's the that's the top floor. Uh, well, that's actually going to be the roof, sort of. The start of the roof. We'll put it that way. And then we can just put this one in here to fill that in. Looking good. Just like we did before, we're going to start on the corner and work our way towards the center. And we have... Uh, six and change. 
So we're going to use two three pieces. Okay, so now in this case we have this we have this little gap here, but I think we want that. Um because with that gap, if we go in So okay, so that's not perfectly lined up. What happens if we go in a little further with the three piece? So, so instead of a, a half nudge, which created the little gap, we'll do a full nudge. So things are not clunk. Things are going to be a little bit overlapped over here, but I think, you know, because we have this pillar in place, it's not going to be noticeable. So if you guys don't tell anyone, I won't tell anyone. How's that sound? Now let's try this and see if it lines up correctly. Yeah, now it's now that's perfect. Right. Okay. So so that was two nudges and then a half nudge to get that over there. Did I do that right? Yeah, I did. Okay. Looking good. Okay, let's do this side. Bring it into there. With a full nudge. So it just kind of glitches into there a little bit, but not, again, not enough to where it's going to be noticeable at all. And then we do one, two, and a half. Pieces there. And we're golden. With our pattern that we intended. <laughs> that we built into the design. That's looking good, ladies and gentlemen. The rest of this is going to be identical to what we did before because remember the sides are uh, the sides are perfectly lined up vertically they're not overhanging like the front so it'll be exactly the same scenario let's do it
right, ladies and gents, we have completed the front portion of floor three. The rest, uh, what remains, is just the uh, logistics floor and then the top, uh, or I should say the ceiling of floor three, and then the roof. However, we are out of time in this episode, so we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here. And when we start up the next episode, we will finish the roof of the build and uh, and then, you know, do a couple other cleanup types of things. And then we should be finished with the architecture portion of our reverse stadium steel factory. And then after that, of course, we'll we'll go back to the the machine part of it and figuring out uh, how we're going to build all that stuff out. And uh, so that is it. So thanks everybody for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.